Welcome everyone to Tech Talk Tuesday, episode number 14. Today we're going to be talking about Ethernet radios and modern radio technology. But before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone that you can catch previous episodes of Baseline Tech Talk Tuesday on the YouTube channel, and that's listed on YouTube under Baseline Web Training. You can see all the Tech Talk Tuesday episodes, as well as Dan starting to produce some more how-to videos, so keep your eye out for those as well. I'm Andy Humphrey. I'm the Regional Sales Manager for the Northeast. Today, joining us, we have Idril Bowen. He's the Regional Sales Manager for the Southeast. And we've got our two other usual suspects, Dan Conger, Training Manager, and Chris Wright, VP of Sales. And uh, Dan, let's not waste any more time. This is going to be a good one. So I'll hand it over to you. Awesome. Awesome. So um, as you mentioned, this is modern radio communication. So not, uh, it's, it's a little bit, something a little old school, but not your father's Buick, not your, not your grandfather's radio setup. So, so today we're talking about baselines, Ethernet radio, and how they fit in to networked irrigation systems. So systems that are moving data around about the irrigation system. Um, so Ethernet radio allows you to connect to a local area network and share that digital data, right? And this uses that same protocols that makes the internet work. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But a good reminder is, and, and something I want you to keep in mind as, as we're talking today is, we're not talking about a connection to a wide area network or the internet. We're talking about device to device or, a, or our own local area network. We'll talk about how to connect to the internet a little bit later on. So, so probably the first thing I wanna jump off with is to kind of address this myth that this is, radio is an old technology. It's not, it's a current technology. And I, let's, um, Chris, do you have a, any insights on why, we're, why this is not old school technology? Well, just like uh, technology has evolved over the past, you know, 10 years, and just as baselines technology has evolved over the last five years, radio technology has evolved um, at the same pace that um, other technology has, and it now utilizes the same protocol that all Ethernet connected devices utilize to communicate between devices. Yeah. And that, that just opens up a whole nother world when we, when we get in this one. And, and so if you've used radio before and you've used other people's radio, this is, this is a different animal. So be aware, be aware of that. So, so let's talk about why baseline ethernet radio is different. And I think that first one is the first thing that that's most important to talk about is ethernet radio is always on and it's always connected. Mm -hmm. Now, What's, what's your thought on that, Andy? Yeah, well, I, I'd like to uh, make the analogy again to the older style radios, let's say. And typically, older style radios would use maybe a send and receive command. So they wouldn't be talking uh, constantly. You would, uh, let's say, for instance, you've changed a setting in your uh, computer software that was running your old school irrigation system. You've changed the runtime. What you would do is press send. And then that command would go out to the controller. And then if you wanted to receive it, you would receive it and then it would disconnect. So it was almost a uh, call, send, disconnect. And when there's no data being transferred, the radios are basically silent. They're not communicating. And with this Ethernet radio technology, it's much more, well, it is basically an internet connection. It's a TCP IP connection. So the two devices are always on. They're always connected but data may not be flowing through that path, but the communication path is connected. Okay, so that is one of the differences is it's not a send and receive commands um, configuration. Right. Which complements the baseline technology and the two-wire technology where we're using real-time data and exchanging information you know, between devices, but with the um, controller and the devices in the field to make real-time irrigation decisions. So same, same protocol. Right. So, so you just touched on another thing that makes this different is this TCP IP protocol. So I don't, I don't, what can you, you tell us about the TCP IP protocol and, and how that fits into the world at, at large? So everything that 
connects to the to the internet or a computer, cell phone, whatever, all have an IP address. It's their address. Everything's got to have a, a place for the data to go to. They all have a MAC address, and with that, it's, it's almost like the uh, TC, the IP address is maybe the phone number for that address. So it's how we connect everything together through the, the internet. So, so essentially what we're ending up with is a networked radio that can be essentially part of a whole digital network. Just, so it's almost like another IP address or another device on my home network. It's just happens to be communicating over a radio wave instead of uh, a, a powered a plug-in Ethernet cable. Mm-hmm. That's a, yep. exactly right. Yep, and you can almost substitute the word radio and replace it with the word wireless because the radio drives drives it, but it's really a wireless signal. And most devices that communicate wirelessly, such as a Wi-Fi router or even your cell phone, under the hood, they're simply radios. So radios can be considered a category or a classification of a, a simple wireless device. Yeah. Yeah. Another significant thing is that we're using this AES 256-bit encryption. Um, very high level security encryption. Who um, had a, someone had a yeah, we, and, and we did talk about this in another uh, Tech Talk Tuesday, yeah. but essentially, I'm going to try to explain this in layman terms as quickly as possible. You have two devices in the field and you have a wireless signal between them and potentially one of those devices is also connected to the internet. We need to make sure that the communication between those devices can't be hijacked or hacked into so that someone could find a back door potentially into a building's network through our devices, which are out in the landscape. And so we're able to put the data packets that we're sending between these two radios and encrypt it with a 256 bit encryption. And the best analogy for this is to think of the data packets and putting them into a locked box and the, it can only be opened by the other controller that knows basically the password or the encryption to open that box and receive the communication signal. And so that type of encryption is not only happening when we connect to our base manager server, but it's happening between these two devices or these two radios on site. So between okay. a controller and a substation or between a controller and a flow station, that type of encryption we're able to do with this TCP IP protocol. And now, Idril, you've had probably the most experience out of, out of, out of uh, well, definitely more than me on configuring these in the field. What, what's the, con- once we've got the radio, how do you, what's the configuration or the setup process look like out in the field? All right. So ideally, when you purchase a system using radios, you will have it configured on your purchase order through your baseline rep or through your, your uh, distributor so that we already have it configured and all you have to do is install it in the field with no configuration problems. Let's say something does go wrong and you have to change a radio or, or something happens. It only takes a, maybe 10 minutes to reconfigure. And that part of that time is just finding your ethernet cable. Uh, very simple process. You jump into the radio with an ethernet cable from your cell phone, computer, or an iPad, and you just change the IP address. It's very simple. It takes about three minutes to reboot once you've done that. And that's part of that 10 minutes. It's a very simple process. So, Simpler, even simpler process, as you said, was to have have it done at the factory. But Let us do it for you up front. Yes, beautiful, nice. Um, and I think, and then the one that I wanted to really bring up is is that there's no FCC li- licensing required, right? So you purchase it, you ins- you program it, you configure it, you set it up, and then you're good to go, right? There's no paperwork, there's no hoops to jump through, there's no antenna restrictions or anything. It's it's an unlicensed band, so I think that's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, I need Andy to let me share my okay. screen. Um, Gosh, we do this share. every time. <laughs> well, well it, it's the Zoom, uh, the Zoom security protocols. There we go. 256 bit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So um, here is a uh, here's an application that I wanted to show you. So an application, and this is probably the simplest or the uh, a very common application is we've got a base station 3200 and a substation that's going to be an extension of that base station 3200. So we're going to bring some zones and maybe some sensors back to that base station 3200. Here they've used an Ethernet radio to wirelessly connect those two devices 
and bring that data back in. Right? We, this is a site only, just device to device, no uh, wide area network, no internet connection. We're bringing that. Now we can run commands and bring uh, sensor data through here. Very simple setup. The other, the other um, one to look at is here I've got um, two flow, uh, excuse me, two base station 3200s. And because they happen to be sharing flow, we needed a flow station. Well, the flow station needs to be able to know how to allocate water and send its commands on who gets water when and what flow looks like and when there's flow alerts. Ethernet radio is an ideal way to do that if we don't want to connect, if we just want to keep it on site. So here, Ethernet radio is allowing communication between these devices on the site. And then the third one is I've got three base station 3200s on this control on the site. Well, this one in the lower right corner, that base station 3200 actually has a network connection available to it. So maybe it's an Ethernet, maybe it's Wi-Fi, whatever it is. Now we can share that network connection to the other base station 3200s with radio. So there's no need to drag wire out there. I could use radio to do this. So these are three applications, three reasons why you might use radio. These are relatively simple. There's definitely more complex setups for them. Yep. And very widely used as well. We mm -hmm. do this all the time. Yeah. Very common too, especially for locations that maybe have a remote water source, either a remote city water source yeah. or a remote pump station. And we want to get that data back to the controller. Oftentimes we'll drop a substation at those remote locations with a radio so that it can be communicating wirelessly to the controller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now the, the thing I, I, that's worth bringing up again is that I'm not, I don't think we're trying to push radio over any other communication method, right? There's other ways you can make this happen. We just want you to have another tool in the toolbox on how you're going to communicate with your devices across the site. So this is, this has certain times where this is absolutely the right answer for you. And there might be something else other times. Um, so as you get out to your site, once you think you're ready to do this, one of the, the, the things that you're going to need to do is to do a radio site survey. And a radio site survey is when you're going to qualify the antenna locations for each controller. Now, not necessarily the controller location because the antenna can be separated from that by a, by a small distance. But here on this map, we figured out where the gateway controller is going to be, who's going to be the one that's going to have that, uh, that's going to get the signal and share it out. And then various endpoints, those would be the controllers most likely or flow stations, kind of depending upon what's uh, on your network. The other thing that's happening is we're looking at the, the length of each in, uh, radio wave. So the longest I've had here is less than a mile, which is what our distance, we can carry up to a mile in radio. Um, we're going to look for terrain issues and antenna conditions. So that, that's our planning. The other thing that comes out of that, well, th so once we plan it on paper or electronically, we need to get out in the field. So here we set up an antenna on a temporary mast, and this is a directional antenna pointing back at the gateway. And we might find out, wow, this location isn't going to work the way we thought because the wall is taller than we thought than we planned on. Can we figure out another way to mount the antenna? So a radio site survey is when you have this opportunity to plan and then to see what signal strength really looks like at each location. Yep. Mm -hmm. And let me let me add to that, Dan that when we're doing the survey, we're not surveying and qualifying the controller location. We are surveying and qualifying the antenna location that's connected to the controller. So in this case, if you look at that picture, a controller could be installed on that wall and you can see that the antenna is pointing in the direction opposite the direction of the wall. So we're qualifying that antenna, not where the controller would be mounted on that wall. Absolutely correct, right? Because we could we could run a length of antenna and, and uh, a length length of cable and move it various various locations. Absolutely. Sure. Yep. Nice. The um, well, let me. So let's look at some antennas. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and uh, Idril, if if you would show us some of. Uh, some of the stuff that you have. Well, I think you were going to show us your, your radio first. What so? What yeah. the radio actually looks like. 
This is the good stuff right here. This is what everybody's been waiting for. <laughs> Drum roll, so, please. This is our ER radio. It's what we call ER, Ethernet radio. And as you can see on the bottom here, you, get it, you probably won't be able to read it. But we, this was already preset to the fact we've got an IP address and the serial number for the radio. You'll use that when you're setting up and doing some programming. We don't use those ports. That's for the manufacturer that uh, makes these radios for us. Now let's flip it over, take a look at this side. So now you see there's actually, this is an ethernet port. I've got a cable plugged in for illustration. I've got a power cord and then the antenna cable and you'll find, here's a huge point of order. We zip tie this on here because you never want to power up this radio that's right here without that antenna. If you do, it'll turn into a brick, what we call a brick. So well, it, you've destroyed the radio. So it's very important you keep that antenna connected. So, and as you can see, right, that silver piece, this is the actual radio piece in here. And then what we did is we worked with the manufacturer, and then Baseline has done all the engineering required on these boards for this to operate and work within our controllers. So that little board, Idril, with the antenna connected to it, that's actually the radio. And then the that's bigger the fiberglass board is the Baseline engineered piece. Right. That's how we made up with it and make things work. There was actually a set of pins under here, so you can't see them there, but we're, it's a pin connector in here where, is how we connect with them. So we had to engineer within their pin connectors to make sure we could get uh, connected to our board and then out to our controller. So how does that uh, install in the controller that's uh, behind your shoulder? All right, so I'll give you an example. I've currently got a cell modem in this particular controller, and the modem actually mounts right up in here in this spot of the controller and then the cable would be essentially the same as this cable here where you run it down over to the controller if you can see that yeah. so the, the ethernet radio board with that ethernet cable plugs into the face plate of the controller that's on the swing assembly on the door exactly exactly and we pull our power the radio antenna goes right up here to this antenna similarly mounted, and then we just pull power off our, what we call the power board in our controller. Awesome. So, so, so this is, I, I, you know, the fact that you've got a cell modem in the place of where that radio might normally mount, to me really speaks to the interchangeability of our communication components, right? So you could, you could take out the cell modem and put it on radio, you could switch it back and forth. It's just- It could be Wi-Fi. Yep. Several screws, just a yeah, couple one thing to both of them installed in the cabinet at the same time together, where the cell modem is your gateway to the internet for the base manager server, and the radio is facilitating the local area. Yeah, we've, actually, we've actually got uh, offsets in here so you can mount it on the side. Yep. Okay. Yep, and then you would utilize a switch to share that connection and the, and the other cord would be plugged into the face panel. And that wow. is a good time to remind us that every baseline device plugs into the ethernet port on the controller. Yep. That's all it's looking for is that TCP IP awesome. ethernet port out. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like technology to me. <laughs> it, absolutely. Right on. Okay. Um, what about uh, the antennas that we're going to connect to that? Okay, so starting out, the antenna we use that comes with the radio on the controller is what we call the salt shaker. You can see it's a little bitty white thing. This, the one we sell is by Laird, and it's a 3 dB gain antenna. So that's, that's how you start, and that's, as you can see, that's a cell modem antenna, 4G, and this is what the uh, Ethernet radio antenna looks like. So that comes with the cabinet or an ethernet radio that that salt shaker is intent right. included. That's, that's part of the kit when you buy a radio if you bought it separate it would be included with that radio i showed you earlier okay okay then the yeah, omni sucks. antenna correct that's based on what we call an omni <clears throat> excuse me you can see that i'm trying to get you the whole picture in here mm -hmm. of course we orient it this direction Which and this one in a moment why What's that? We'll discuss in a moment why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and so it, it's a 5 dB gain, and typically it's used on what we call our gateways. 
where we have the one radio that's getting connected to a cell modem or Ethernet, it's the gateway for all the other radios that are going to come in back to the gateway and out to the Internet. So that's typically what you use as a gateway antenna. Uh, it can be used elsewhere, but most of the time we don't need the added height and um, expense of an Omni all over the side when the salt shaker will do the job. Now, isn't the salt shaker an Omni antenna as well? Absolutely. Yes, it is. It, it, it has the same characteristics, just a smaller, um, lower power uh, dB gain on it. Mm -hmm. All right. Then the next one is what we call the, the Yagi. Uh, it can be pronounced several ways, so don't get, don't get hung up with that. It's <laughs> just a Yagi. Yagi, Yagi, tomato, tomato. Um, very important that you orient it the proper way. They have this little gray piece on top. Uh, there's a polarity involved with the way the signals work. And so we want this to be pointing straight at the Omni, or our gateway. Uh, and, it, and it's important that you orient it correctly elevation-wise this way and this way, because like we're, we're going to illustrate shortly, it does make a difference where you're aiming this antenna. And a, and a couple of degrees, I've literally been on sites trying to get a really long distance. As you can imagine, the further away you get, the more important that you more carefully aim it, you can totally miss the signal from the gateway if you have it oriented wrong. And if you're yeah, because the different out. different antennas generate different patterns, right? Correct. Six patterns. Yep. Right. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna get into yeah. that shortly. So that's that's the Yagi. So so uh, so uh, sometimes people call a Yagi a directional, but the Yagi is, is probably a better way to do it, to call it. But so. So as Chris, Chris mentions patterns, let's, um, let's show you a couple different patterns that we have here. So here's, here's a omnidirectional antenna on the right and then the donut, donut pattern that it produces. So it's, it's, not, it's 360 degrees in one plane, but in another plane, it's not, quite a, it's not really a sphere. It's, I, I think a donut is a good description of it. Donut. And... <laughs> Is that a Homer Simpson donut? So it, this is that central gateway, right? So we're radiating out in all directions. Um, and if I had multiple antennas pointing back at this one, it would be easy to catch it from multiple different directions. Now, the thing about an, so a salt shaker is also an omni, as you mentioned, Idril, it's a smaller pattern, but is, it's not really a sphere so is it possible to have this on top of a building? Let's say I've got a 60 foot tall building and have a, a salt shaker antenna down at the bottom. I've got great line of sight. I can, they can see each other. Is it always going to work? No, you, you can't miss. It can not uh, get in to the signal and make connection. Right. So it could be almost an umbrella, right? Under, it's under the underside of that donut and it might not catch it. So for me, that's, that's about the radio site surveys. We'll check all of that. So there's, yeah. there's an omni, omnidirectional antenna. And then the other one is a, um, a Yagi antenna or the directional antenna, right? So that has that weird pattern. It's not donut shaped and it is, it's more pointed. It's not, it's definitely not a laser beam at, at, by any stretch of the, of the imagination, but it's going to be more pointed and we would aim this Yagi antenna at that donut. The donut's a pretty easy, uh, is an easier target to hit with a pointed Yagi antenna. Two donuts trying to hit each other, that's a harder, that's a stretch. Yeah, and you use these as you get a little further away, you'll find that you may need the extra boost uh, of the power because it's still a 3 dB gain, but it's, it's all focused into a smaller. Oh, vision. yes. So, we're, we're kind of pushing, it's a power antenna, so to speak. Uh -huh. So we're shooting in a more minuscule area, trying to get that signal. Okay. Now, and looking at that diagram and looking at the antenna itself and the way that it's mounted with that cable, I see that uh, there's a connection there and then also strain relief on that cable. Idril, mm -hmm. do you want to talk about the importance of connections and cable? Yep. Strain Absolutely. Relief? So when you're doing a radio connection, that the piece here, it's not waterproof. You really have to put, and you might say, you might can say probably not. There's some rubber, we use a rubber 3M tape 
that you stretch and you you know you conceal that connection because if it gets rusty, you're gonna you're gonna lose uh, connectivity. You're gonna lose you lose uh, DB gain. You'll lose some of your gain. So that's important. And the other piece, these are cables. They come apart. I don't know if you've ever done your TV cable and had the connector come off in your hand because it wasn't made properly. Well, if you're yanking, you know, a 50 foot cable yanking on that connection. It's not going to last very long. So you've got to put some sort of strain relief uh, on the antenna. Some people will put what they call a drip loop, and that's that's fine because then you can do more. Uh, you know, you can connect the uh, connection and, and get a good strain relief with the drip loop in it too. So yeah, that strain relief is important too because just the pull of gravity alone could yeah. take its toll on that connection over time. Right. Yep. right. Now, as the antenna patterns um, work with each other. Um, there can be some conflict. So there's the, the fren- what we call the Fresnel zone. And the antennas are not these lines or laser beams, if you will. It's this football-shaped uh, signal that's coming out from an omnidirectional antenna. And what can happen is in that radius, that Fresnel radius zone, especially that bottom half, if there's an obstruction like a tree or another building, that's just going to throw that football-shaped signal off. And you might say, well, I've got line of sight across my sight. I can see the next Omni antenna, but you're not accounting for all the other objects in the way in the bottom of the radius that's going to influence it. Yep. Again, it, this points right back to that radio site survey, right? Because we're going to set up each point and measure the signal strength and the, and the data integrity. Yep. And when we do that survey, we want to make sure that we do it in like, conditions when we're using that radio to communicate i.e in the summer when the trees are leaved out we want to make sure that we are qualifying that antenna location with the canopy on the trees so that it would create interference that we may be able to pick up and um, adjust for otherwise as opposed to doing it in the winter when there's no leaves on the tree yeah yeah so important considerations. Good. Well, I'm looking at our time. I know we're getting really close. Yeah, um, we've, got a, we've got a couple of questions. Um, one would be that, uh, um, you know, you do, there's a question regarding connection to the controller with the antenna. Yes, there needs to be cable um, between the antenna and the controller. There needs to be a connection. Um, Idril's holding up what's called LMR 400 cable which uh, meets our specification. Um, And it's also important to consider the length of that cable because you will get signal loss just like you get friction loss or pressure loss through pipe with irrigation. You get loss through longer cables as well that could impact your signal strength. So that's something that's also taken into consideration during the radio site survey. Mm And then the other question is, the, does the antenna have to be installed on a flat roof rather than a slope roof? And that is completely conditional on um, you know, the pattern of the signal that you are trying to produce with that particular type of antenna that you're using. Now, if you get into radio waves, you're going to get you know, reflection, you're going to get refraction, you're going to get all kinds of different Um, conditions that exist because you are bouncing radio waves off of surfaces and having radio waves go through, um, you know, fences or leaf canopies, etc. So, um, you know, all those things are taken into consideration when the site survey is being performed. Very good. All right. So that's all the questions. What uh, we got one minute. What's on tap for next week? Managing secondary water sources. So how do you handle one water source, one controller? Got that down. That's, e- that's opening. That's easy as pie. But what happens when we have other additional water sources? How do you manage it? So we're going to be Absolutely. talking about. Yep. And the devices that we can use to control it, manage it, et cetera. So mm-hmm. it's going to be another exciting one next week for sure. Absolutely. All right, All everybody. Right. Our time is up. We appreciate your participation and attendance, and hopefully you learned something new today. 
And uh, if you have any questions or have any opportunities where radio communication could be utilized, make sure to get in touch with uh, Baseline, either through support or through your regional manager to uh, discuss that and set up a survey and uh, see if we can provide some solutions. So right on. Go out and have a great week. Happy 4th of July to everybody. Enjoy the uh, long weekend and we will see you next Tuesday for another exciting episode of Tech, Tech Talk Tuesday. Talk Tuesday. All right. <laughs> awesome. Peace see you out. later, guys. Bye-bye.